Dr. Funchain, once a patient like Cindy decides to participate in a trial, what happens next? So there is um, a lot actually that happens. So there is a lead in period to a trial. So once you decide, it's not like you can start tomorrow on a, on a trial drug. What happens really, um, there's a whole safety lead in that we call an enrollment period where um, there's a long checklist of making sure that a person is healthy and there's nothing, there's no organ or anything in particular where we'd be worried about this particular drug. So there's a, there's a a checklist that way there are usually sometimes um, there's a new scan. If the last scan has, is a little bit too old, just so that we know exactly what somebody looks like right when they walk into the trial and start the drug. Um, There are usually some um, blood tests and procedures that come before and some of this stuff, you know, half of the blood is for the trial and half of the blood is for our scientists usually so that they can work on some of the science behind what's happening to someone on a trial, which is pretty cool. Um, And sometimes there is a procedure or biopsy or something like that that's involved. But in general, the lead in is somewhere usually between two and four weeks from the time somebody decides they're willing to be on a trial. And there are, um, There are some extra safety measures, like if you decide, if you hear about a trial, you can't go on the trial right away. There's got to be sort of a thinking period that's usually about 24 hours before you can literally, you know, sign your name on the line. But yeah, I'd expect something about two to three weeks before going on a trial. And then Mm -hmm. once folks are on a trial, it's kind of like treatment. It's just getting the treatments when you get the treatments. Sometimes there's um, extra checks for, again, for safety on drug levels and things. Would you review the safety protocols in place for clinical trials? Yeah, sure. So safety is number one when it comes to trials, really. There are... um, There are guardrails on guardrails on guardrails. But in any... Any clinical trial protocol, it actually starts with even before the trial starts. So whenever somebody wants to bring in a trial or wants to start a trial, um, and this is true at any academic institution or any institution that, that runs trials, the trial goes through something called an IRB or an institutional review board. And that board reviews it and says, look, is this safe? Is Are we harming people? Are we unnecessarily coercing people? And they read through the whole thing. And usually there's a protocol data monitoring committee that also looks at it. There's usually two. And there's a lot of checks that have to that a trial has to go through to make sure it's safe and fair for all, all participants. So, so that happens first. And then once the trial opens, um, there is continual monitoring. Every visit, every number that's drawn, any visit, even if the visit isn't at a at the hospital that's running the trial, even if it's a, you know, a local urgent care, all of those things end up getting reported back. And there's a whole team of people besides, so a patient will see the doc or the nurse, or maybe sometimes a um, research coordinator, research assistant, but then there are all these research coordinators that sit in offices that review everything, put it into computers and and then record everything that happens to someone on a trial. And all of that data actually goes to an external review uh, organization, a a clinical trial um, research organization. And what they do is they look over all of the data also. So it's not just, you know, internal people checking because internal people may be biased for their the people that pay them, right? Right. Um, All of that data goes to an external monitoring board also to make sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to go. Yeah. Cindy, um, in your experience, did you feel like safety was a priority? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. They were very, very careful. Um, I had a, uh, Mine was a, a two-part. I had a vaccine along with this uh, uh, nivolumab. And so they would have to give me the vaccine, sit there and stare at me <laughs> to make sure I didn't faint or something. <laughs> and that was a, a good half hour. Then I got the immunotherapy and I'd have to wait an hour after that before I started on the chemotherapy. So, oh. yeah, they were in there watching me like a hawk. And I felt, I felt very safe. I really did. Dr. Funchain, what are a a patient's rights when they participate in a trial? The most important thing I think that Cindy mentioned before is the patient can withdraw at any time, 
anytime. They can sign the paperwork and the next second decide not to. They can be almost to the end of the trial and decide that they want to come off. Uh, the, the, the last word is always with the patient. Um, I think the other things that that in terms of safety, you can see, so every patient before starting a trial gets an informed consent. It is multiple pages. There's a lot of legalese in it, but they do try, they do try their best to make it as uh, readable <laughs> and understandable as possible so that people can, even if they don't have a medical background, kind of understand what they've gotten, um, the mechanism of what they've gotten and, and what, what new drug they're getting and you know, generally, what are the risks and benefits? And for instance, if there are, um, let's say there's genetic testing involved, there's always clauses that tell you what that means and how protected your genetic information is, that kind of stuff. So, so it's a very long thing. And again, once someone gets that, they have to have a certain amount of time before they can, they can sign on the line. So I think information, education, and then the ability to, to come off whenever, um, you know, if they find necessary. Yeah. What happens after a trial is completed? Is a patient monitored? And if so, how? So that depends on the trial. Most trials do monitor after um, a, a trial, either the drug is complete or the course is complete um, for a certain amount of time. And it depends on the trial. For some trials, it's six months after. For some trials, it's years afterwards. Um, so in melanoma, we have a trial that just reported out their seven and a half year follow-up, but it was the first, it was actually the, the first um, immunotherapy combination of its kind that involved the drug that you had, Cindy, uh, nivolumab. So, um, so it is pretty cool. I mean, it sort of, that, that combination changed the, the face of what um, patients with melanoma could come to expect from their treatment. So we're all very interested to know what that kind of follow-up is, but yeah, it depends on the trial. Mm-hmm. 